filament changes on the Ender 3 S1 Pro are possible, but the method is a little strange. In this video, I'll quickly show you how you can do it using Cura. If you're not using Cura because there's no Ender 3 S1 Pro printer profile, then follow my guide linked in the description and at the end of the video, where I show you how you can import the files you need to be able to slice files for your S1 Pro with Cura. If you want to use Creality Slicer, you can, and I have tested the same method and can confirm it works at the time of making this video. The reason why mid-print filament changes are different on the S1 Pro to other similar printers is the screen. Creality have had to mess with some of the Marlin configuration to get the screen to work well, but unfortunately this means some other features suffer. Thankfully, there is a workaround. I'll demonstrate using Cura 5.0.1, which at the time of making this video is the latest version. If you're living in the future and have a more recent version of Cura, then you'll have to just test this for yourself to see if it works. It should. The first thing to do is open your slicer and import the model you wish to print. Select the material, nozzle size, and any other settings you want to use, and then hit slice. I'll be printing this Fortnite keyring for my son, and I want the letters to be a different color to the background. I'm printing in PLA with a 0.4 mm nozzle, 0.2 mm layer height, and 20% infill. When I hit slice, I can see that it's going to take 39 minutes to print. And when I click the preview tab, I can see that the print will consist of 24 layers. What I now need to know is at what height or layer number I need to change the filament. To do this, we can move the slider down from the top until the letters disappear. Zoom in if you need to, and decide which layer you want the change to happen. Bear in mind that the printer will complete the layer and then move away from the print so that you can change the filament. It doesn't do it before printing the layer. As my text starts printing after layer 15, I can take this as the layer height I wish to change filament. If I were unsure, I could always err on the side of caution and let the printer print one layer of text in the previous color before changing filament. It wouldn't really be noticeable. Now we know the layer that we want to change filament, we can set up a post-processing script. To do this, select Extensions, Post-Processing, and Modify G-Code from the toolbar at the top of the screen. Instead of selecting Filament Change, which I found didn't give enough options, select Pause at Height. This is where we will enter a few settings that will make our filament change method work. First, change the Pause at field to Layer Number. Then, in the Pause Layer field, enter the layer number that you decided on for changing your filament. In my case, this is 15. Next, in the Method field, select BQM25. This seems to work much better than the Marlin M0 option that you would think would be better. Leave Disarm Timeout at 0 and make sure Park Print is ticked. Next, set an X and Y location that you would like your printer to move to when you change your filament. For me, the most convenient place is the front left of the bed, so I'm setting both to zero. If you want the filament to be retracted before the nozzle moves away from the print, set the distance and speed in the next two fields. I like to set these to one millimeter distance and somewhere between 20 and 30 millimeters per second. Personally, I don't like any filament to be extruded after the pause, as it can cause too much filament to be extruded at the beginning of a new filament, so I set the extrude amount to zero. The extrude speed will have no effect if the extrude amount is set to zero, but change this to something similar to your retract speed if you do want material to be extruded after the change. If you find you get any gaps when the new filament starts extruding, then you can try ticking the redo layer box, but I leave this unticked. Standby temperature is the temperature you want the nozzle to be at while the nozzle is parked away from the print. As we will be changing filament, set this to the same temperature that you're printing at. As I'm printing PLA at 200 degrees, I'm setting this to 200 too. Display text unfortunately has no effect on the S1 Pro, but should show on the displays of other printers with different screens. Type something in here if you want to see if it will display on the screen. Now I've found that none of this works unless you add something into the G-code before and G-code after pause fields. I find the simplest option is to enter M300 in both. This command is to play a tone. On other printers, you'll get a beep, but it doesn't do anything on the S1 Pro other than initiate the whole process for us. Once you've entered all of this information, click close and then re-slice your print. The post-processing script will now have been added into our G-code and we're ready to take it to our printer. Bear in mind here that the post-processing script doesn't get removed unless you do it manually. This means that if you don't remove it, any future print will also pause in the same place. To delete the script, open the post-processing scripts window again via extensions, post-processing and modify G-code, and then simply click on the cross next to your pause at height script. You can add multiple pauses in the exact same way if you wish to do multiple changes, just remember to select different layer heights for each one. We now have our G-code saved to an SD card ready to go into our printer, however there are also a few things you need to do while the printer is paused, which I'll show you now. 
First load up any filament you wish to start with and then start the print as you normally would. When the printer reaches the end of the layer you selected for the change, it will move away to the position you told it to go to in the Park Print fields. Once it has stopped, check on the display that the nozzle is maintaining the temperature you told it to in the Standby Temperature field. Now we can remove the filament. As with any filament change on this printer, I find the best way is to depress the extruder lever and then push the filament in until I feel it extruding freely and then quickly pull it back out. Switch your filament and then load in the new colour as you would normally. Pushing it through until the previous colour is completely flushed out. Remove any extruded filament and have a rag ready to wipe away any remaining oozing filament from the nozzle before the print starts. You may notice here that there's no obvious way to tell the printer that you've completed the filament change and that you would like the print to continue. This is a strange bug with a simple solution. Press the stop button as if you were going to cancel the print, but then select no when it asks you to confirm. When you return to the print screen, the pause icon is replaced by a play button. When you press this, the printer will immediately return to the print and start printing the next layer. If a lot of filament has oozed out of the nozzle since you wiped it, you may wish to push a little more through, wipe away the excess, then straight away hit the play button. This ensures that there's filament in the throat and nozzle ready to be extruded and that you won't get any gaps in your print. The alternative would be to set an extrude amount and extrude speed in the post-processing script, but there'd be a lot of trial and error trying to work out what settings to use. If your print has restarted successfully, then your filament change is complete. Your print should now complete as usual, but with multiple different colours. Leave me a comment below if you use this method to complete a filament change on your 3D printer. This video was always designed to focus on the Ender 3 S1 Pro because of its quirks, but the same method works with other printers too. If you'd like to see how to use unsupported machines in Cura, as I mentioned earlier, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.